Hey there. We're going to pump the brakes on the home discoveries for just a little bit, and we're going to switch over to learn about pyrotechnics. Now, obviously, when we're talking about fireworks, uh, don't try everything that you're about to see here at home uh, for safety reasons. What we're going to learn about is the basics behind fireworks. It's all about a chemical change. So on the molecular level, you're rearranging some stuff and often with the result of heat. We're going to explain that throughout this process. What I've got inside this container is pure hydrogen. Now what we're going to do is introduce some heat to this hydrogen and it's going to react with something in the air that we're all too familiar with. <sighs> Lovely oxygen. Now we need that oxygen for us to breathe and this hydrogen is going to need that oxygen to react and have a chemical change. Now you guys are going to be familiar with the byproduct of this chemical change. It's going to be H2O, water. So when we burn hydrogen with oxygen in the atmosphere, the byproduct is water. So let's take a look at what that is like. I'm going to take our hydrogen and put it into some bubble juice and create hydrogen bubbles. Now the first round is just going to be down in this bowl. Let's take a look at what happens when we introduce heat to our hydrogen bubbles. As you can see, that hydrogen reacted with oxygen in the air and burned. That's a very pure and simple chemical change. Now, our fireworks are going to have a few added ingredients to change the way they behave. What we're going to do is we're going to combine hydrogen and oxygen into that beach ball so that they are right next to each other. And we're going to see what that does to our chemical change. So while this looks the same, we've added some oxygen gas into this beach ball with the hydrogen. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow those oxygen and hydrogen molecules to float right next to each other inside of our bubbles, and we're going to see how that chemical change is a little bit different than with just hydrogen. So before I get started, I'm going to put on some hearing protection. And now I'm going to add our hydrogen and oxygen bubbles. It's not going to take a whole lot of them this time. You'll see why. We're going to put our stash safely away. Let's take a look and a listen to hydrogen and oxygen. Wow. As you can see, and particularly here, when you have your hydrogen and your oxygen right next to each other, that changes from a conflagration, which is like a slower burning, to an explosion, an uncontrolled expansion of those of that chemical change. So these are all exothermic reactions where the byproduct is going to include heat. So this reaction heats up as it happens until it extinguishes itself. So we have our three key ingredients. We have our fuel source, here it's hydrogen. We have oxygen, which came from the gas in a tank. And we also have a source of ignition, which for us is our butane lighter. So fireworks are going to work the same way. They have to have a fuel source. They're going to have to have oxygen and they're also going to need some sort of ignition, which is going to be that wick. So when you're having a chemical reaction, you're going to need these three key ingredients of fuel, oxygen, and a heat source. Now this demonstration is going to show you that if you don't have that ratio correct, uh, the chain reaction of it burning itself can stop. So we're going to ignite our sparkler, and we can show you that it has all of the needed ingredients to be able to burn not only in the air, but it can even burn underwater. So it has its fuel, it has its oxygen source, and it is able to maintain a hot enough temperature to continue to burn down inside that water, which is really neat. And uh, again, don't try it at home, but there are a number of other fireworks that can burn underwater. So from the Museum of Discovery, we want to say we hope you have a happy 4th of July and to remind you that fireworks are nothing more than chemistry. So you're going to be watching exothermic chemical reactions all 4th of July. I'll show you one last version to show you how that expanding heat wants to rise up using my very own hand. Take a look at this. Happy 4th of July, everybody.